Right, I should get this started already. Let me pause that music and close this window. Hi, Slick Ninja. Um, give me a sec. I hear myself echoing on somewhere. Oh well. Uh, let's just get this going. That's too loud, honestly. I'll just hope no one else can hear it. Anyway, as you can see here, I got SNES GT open, and sorry, Jay Boney, I just stopped the music. <laughs> If anyone wants to know where that music is from, it was from the Hoshi no Kabi Yume no Izumi no Monokatari album. It has seven or so vocal tracks, which are arranged from Kirby's Adventure. I need to shut myself up. Anyway, let me post a link to SNES GT first. Because... I don't even know who here has SNES GT, so that'll just give us a reference point. This is the emulator that I have up, and I'm going to show you how to boot up certain Satellaview games on it. So, what, oh, sorry, I just had a total brain fart there. It's because I'm hearing myself echo, that's why. Anyway, options, settings, you'll notice that SNES GT actually has a BSX settings option. By default, obviously, everything's turned off. Shut up, me! Ugh, I can't focus like that. Let me shut that. Ah, sorry about that. I'm always doing something dumb on these streams, huh? Anyway, obviously, I will want to click Use BSX ROM. Now, when it's asking for the BSX ROM, the ROM it is looking for, I think for reference here, I will refer specifically to No Intro and dig up their DAT for BSX. So. Everyone has a good reference picture for what ROM it's looking for. Uh, let me see. You know what? Let me just move the screen to a web browser briefly. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> um, add window capture. Firefox. There. That'll uh, do briefly. Uh, I want to get on a datamatic, basically. Uh, search. Yes. Uh, why is it not returning results? <sighs> okay. Oh, it's not returning results because I'm on the Nintendo DS version. Okay, Super Nintendo. There we go. I apologize. I don't use Datamatic that often. <sighs> Typo. 
Here we go. The ROM it's looking for is on a no intro dat under the title. Um, let me uh, scroll up a bit. It's under the title BSX Sora Namayo Nusu Maiata Machi no Monogatari. Size 1024. It's basically a megabyte. That's a CRC32. The other stuff doesn't matter as much. But basically, this is the BSX ROM that is commonly circulating on the internet. It's been dumped enough times that everyone knows that it's legit. And there's also a copy of it up on the BSL, the homepage. Except that it has a copier header on it, and that can be a different discussion of annoying things altogether. Anyway, for making this real quick for me, I just pulled my BSX BIOS out from my SD2 SNES. So I'm just going to click this. These other settings are for fine tuning in case you have problems, basically. Boot from BSX ROM means that games will boot from BSX and you can load them from the menu and whatnot. If you disable it, it'll probably just use like BIOS settings for general things but not actually use the ROM. I'm not sure the entire details about that. Save BSX SRAM, <coughs> SRAM separately is pretty much exactly what it says. The date doesn't really seem to matter so far on anything that I know of, but the time, I will get into that later. I will get into that later, and I will show you some of the neat things you can do on SNES CT by messing with the clock. So, since people have been asking me what BS Fire Emblem was, I will start by booting that up. As you can see, well, as you can see, basically. Now, if just to let you know that it's because of the BSX ROM, I will try disabling it and loading that again. Hmm, I don't think that's what. Okay, let me try loading a different one because it might be. Uh, I'll need a better example for something that doesn't boot right without it. Let's see. It might be digging into my BIOS anyway, so that might be affecting it. I'm not really sure, but anyway, let me boot that back up. Right. Anyway, if you see the clock here, it says 804. One thing I can do with SNES GT that's pretty neat is manipulate the clock like, say, this. I will set it to 809 and reset the ROM. Oh. Every time I unfocus, it actually pauses, so I need to keep this going. And now the clock is... You see, I actually adjusted the clock, the game boot set. No. Let's try 855. 
this would be when the game should be over. I'm not sure. It's not booting. Yeah! Sometimes fiddling with the clock can do strange things. Hmm. Okay. Now, now that I booted that up, let me actually dig back in here. Do I have the... Wait. Oh, that's why it's checking. Okay, um... Let's... Aha. Now, BS Tante Club is a really good example of a game that has difficulties booting up on emulators. But, as you can see, since I set the BIOS and whatnot, it boots up here A-OK. -okay. Uh, let me just let me just detail some things about BS Fire Emblem before I go on. Uh, anyway, what was I doing here? Oh yeah, I booted up BS Tante Club. And as you can see, it's pretty playable in this and SCP. And stuff happens based on the game clock. Now, I will set it to 6.09 on the game clock and reset it. Now as you can see it has a different message and basically what happened here is because the game clock set later it's actually skipping portions of the game that keep it in sync and it's telling me to wait until f 10 minutes 34 seconds basically Now, when this happens, you see I'm at a completely different scene from what the actual start of the game is. Let's see how much further this goes up. 6, 19. Let's try this.
22 minutes 34 seconds. Okay, I'm not waiting that long. Let's try 629. Definitely not waiting that long. Six thirty nine. These go pretty long if you let it, basically. Basically, for whatever reason, some of the games let you join in as late as, like, 15 minutes in, even though by that point the game would be very close to being over. <laughs> 55 is the end time! That's goofy. Anyway, let's try another example. Here's a game I play quite often. Imagine only having f <laughs> As I was saying, imagine only having seven minutes to complete everything because it took you 50 minutes to download the game. And then the screen pops up! Ugh! Well, at least I got a boomerang. Yay! Look at that dark world and these armor statues! Ow! Ow! Oh. I died! Yeah, it'd be pretty difficult, wouldn't it? Why did I try booting this one up? I apologize, I tried booting something up that won't actually boot on here. And SNESGT crashed. Oopsie. Yeah, SNESGT doesn't quite work with everything. In fact, there's actually quite a bunch of Satellite ROMs that will either refuse to boot or will crash it. And that Sound Journal one is one of them, even though I can boot that. I can boot that, like, even on my SD2 SNES and whatnot. Okay, let's try. Let's try jumping in via Super Mario USA with my. Okay, let me reset all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo, a score of zero. And then there's that crash screen. Let's try 43 minutes. Oh, that crash screen really crashes the screen. Haha. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, um, if you fiddle with Satellia games quite a bit, you'll probably end up crashing things. This is why I tend to be a guinea pig for this sort of thing. And it doesn't even remember what games I booted up. Go fig. Anyway. Eight forty four. There are a few games which will actually 
like give you the boot if you try joining in too late. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I have them quite here. Let me see if Shino and Gashima is one. No, it's not. Is that shit Julian? <laughs> I'm trying to look for... Oh, this might be one of them. Yeah, here's one game... Uh, no, never mind. Uh, what's happening here? I don't think I ever got this to go anywhere before. Okay, what am I doing? <laughs> okay, so much for the tutorial part. Now I'm at something where even I don't know what's going on. Okay, never mind. Let's boot something else. Uh, let's see. Okay, let me show you something. Let me show you this because it's a regular download game as opposed to a sound like game. With SNES GT, it'll actually play um, the BSX ROM here. And for reference, I'm using a fan translation. It's overcrowding my voice. Give me a second. Ooh. There we go. That's a bit better. Yeah, whatever. Oh wait, let me go back to the screen so you see exactly what I did. As soon as I'm on the screen, turn around, press A. Load stored data. Load ROM, fat, fat, fat. Because I'm playing Satellaview. I chose a ROM that purposely loads fast. Unfortunately for me, it's Star Soldier 2 Minutes. A game I suck at. See what I mean? Now, one interesting thing I'll add is that, as you can see here, this game has a command to exit, which is select. Let me see what I map select to on this. Uh, right curl. Okay. I hit select, and unlike most emulators where that would just crash everything, this actually kicks me back into BSX. Wow, Slick Ninja's fapping to my sucking. Too lewd. Okay, uh... Oh yeah, I... Kept quite a few ROMs in this directory now that I remember. Okay, now let's try... I don't know what I was going to try. Oh, here's probably... I'm going to try some games that I don't expect to work. Because I remember Konai-chan not working. For whatever reason. Yeah, it's not working. I remember BS Rhino Shiren not working. Yeah, that doesn't work either. I will... I do have the ability to play those games on other, on an, so other emulators, and I will do that at some later point. Um, oh, here's probably going to be an odd one. 
Bokujo Monogatari. This is a download, but because the header is kind of screwed up, it does the G SNES just the no, 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 SNES GT does not recognize it as a Totalvi ROM, and therefore it just plays more or less. Um, no tutorial mode. Let me play play. If you're wondering, the ROM just plain has no sound. I don't know why, it just doesn't. To make it more confusing, there's the BS Bokujo Monogatari's, which is not quite the same as the, as the one that's a download Bokujo Monogatari, but that's basically a mind screw. Anyway, some more games booting up, just to show you games booting. Since I played some Kirby music -y earlier, it would be all too appropriate if I had a Kirby game booting, huh? Fast forward! Hello, ESMADM. Would you like me to restart what I was saying from the beginning? Okay, enough of that. Ah, here's one of the more strange examples. This is a round dump I did about a year and a half ago. Well, more like more like the folks at SAS Fruits they did, and I put it up on the blog. But yeah, as you can see, it looks like RPG Maker, and it'll boot into a game, basically. I'll just play the introduction to this a bit, and... Then switch to something different.
Okay. So, for your future reference, this is Cock-a-Doodle-Doo, and it's a JRPG where you play as a chicken. But I'll deal with that later. Hmm. Let me see how the Monopoly games boot on this. Huh. They just boot like that. Let me see. Hold on. I'm gonna. This, this is basically the first time I tried this, so I'm gonna need to see if they check the currency. Autofill. Okay. Okay, it looks like this runs. No, wait. Okay, I guess this isn't playing right, never mind. Try that again. Oh, now it's let me play. That is strange. Okay. Ironically enough, I just learned this. In order to play this Monopoly game on SNESDT, you gotta quit it and then let it boot back into BSX so it makes a save file for you. That was a very interesting turn of events. Let me boot up a different round. This one probably won't boot. No way. Let's see. Looks like this might boot after all. No, never mind. Some games, even though they're perfectly valid, will give you error 09. And your only alternative, basically, is to throw a different emulator at it. Plane doesn't boot. And they're both very similar games code wise, so that basically doesn't really make sense. Uh, Alright, let me pick a few other examples of checking how things boot on SNESGT. Do I have the 
Super Bomberman rum up on here? No, I don't think I do. Ugh. I could check here. Yeah, I'll try Super Bomber Man. And you'll probably see it'll go into the bios and Hi Axel Rocks. So anyway, this is just plain old Super Bomber Man. Oh. Uh, well, at least it's refusing to crash the emulator. Other things have it worse, like, I know Beast Nest will actually crash the ROM, and other emulators will crash completely if you try to boot that for whatever reason. That doesn't boot. Okay, now let's try a BSF Zero so I can show a glitch. Let's see, Night League. And what's the clock set at? The clock is set at 6.43. Let me set this to zero. Five. Five minutes. Okay. Hard reset. And... Fast forward a bit. That's a bit too. F th oh, well, that's the time I wanted to show the glitch anyway. Free practice round one, Mute City One! Okay. Now, on SNESCT, you can see this boots, but there is an issue. Watch what happens. I'm trying to use a keyboard to play this game. Yeah, I know, it sounds like an excuse for me to be lousy and get away with it, but oh well. Oh. Now, let me do this in slow motion so you just realize what happened there. As you can see, I'm failing to clear the lap. One more go. Still the same thing. No lap clear for this emulator. There are only a few emulators that get that right at all, actually. It's kind of weird. But anyway, basically if you can't clear laps, then you can't accumulate a score or use turbo. Which basically means you'll always look like a failure at the game. At least you can play the whole thing though. Let's fiddle with the timer a bit. Let's try 6.45. Uh, let's skip ahead a bit. 648. <laughs> As you can see, I just skipped right into a Grand Prix race. This is why I wanted Ikari to put an adjustable timer in the SD2 SNES. Boom, here's Sandstorm! Fast forward, fast forward. I will say, this is an entirely automated scene. 
because it's basically showing off the course. Okay. And now you will probably see that even on Grand Picks, I won't be able to clear a lap. Just drop in the last. I can still explode though. Even though I was standing perfectly still, the explosion moves. Right. Time to open another ROM. Let's see what happens when I try loading an x light like game. Okay, I think I'm gonna figure out what exactly is gonna happen here, and... sucks. Really sucks.
Hmm. Well, I guess that's that, anyway. That's not something to Yahoo about. I did better on one of my... Oh, oh, oh. Let me show Kaizo Chojin Super Demand Zero, just for the sake of showing that. I should check to see if this game has a way to go back into BSX from the game, actually. Let's see. I'll boot it up once, and then do a soft reset, and then maybe do a hard reset. Let's see. Alright, let's see what happens there. What I'm expecting is... Huh, not quite what I expected. Maybe it doesn't emulate that part. What I was expecting was for the DRM lock to kick in after I did that. Let's see... If I remember right, the, dump th the first dump ROM of this game, it had exactly one boot up before it basically expired. But... Obviously enough, emulators don't generally emulate DRM, so... Let's have another game crash! Waiting for it. And that's with 40... It's still showing the first scene, even with the 48 minutes on the clock. That's goofy. But yeah, it crashed. It's basically crashing when it's asking for a voice sample, which, for whatever reason, is not up on there. I might as well show, uh... I might as well show how this looks as well, because I just recently had this ROM redumped. Boom! Those garbled graphics? That's just how it is. That is the state the ROM is in when you dump it from an item pack in the instance of this VSL. -da. And there's basically nothing. Ugh, nothing I can do about it. I don't even know what Nintendo was smoking when they put chunks of the ROM in one place and other chunks of the ROM in what I assume was the PS RAM. But either way, you kind of need to use the patches to play this game now. Let's boot a magazine just because I haven't booted one up yet. Nintendo homepage. It's technically a magazine. I'm sure if I could read Japanese, these would be very interesting reads. You got some Nintendo 64, some Nintendo Power, Super Famicom, Game Boy, stuff like that. Donkey Kong Country 3.
Super Punch Out? Yeah, check out those profiles for Super Punch Out characters. What the hell is with Piston Hurricane's face? Right, I'll stop looking at that now. Let's look at another magazine. There's probably one I want to boot up just because it looks ridiculous. Let's see, is it on here? Here we go. For whatever reason, this one just boots. It has no sound. Okay, let's take a look here. Here's a picture that looks kind of goofy. Here's a, another picture that looks more normal. And here's some... Here's some pictures that start getting ridiculous. Look at Mario in the Mach 5. For some reason, there's a picture of some food plastered over a Mario Kart screenshot. There's some Final Fantasy stuff. And, um, uh, here's this weird ass drawing of Mario with a weird face. And there's a 128 dead Mario 64 Mario carcasses. And, uh, And here's some other things, basically. And I think that's basically as we. Oh no, no. Here's here's a shot of Luigi burning Mario's butt for whatever reason. And there's and there's Luigi being stomped on by a spotted Yoshi. For whatever reason, this is, I I don't even get the context of all this. It's just very weird pictures. Here we got Mario with a baseball cap, Mario with a hard hat, Mario um uh, snowboarding. Mario looking like a... I don't even know. I don't even know. I guess this is like fan art for Mario 64. It is very weird. I will say it's pretty impressive that the Super Nintendo can even produce Mario 64 screenshots, by the way. But yeah, I just wanted to show those because because it's very weird. And weird stuff like that happens when I dump Satellaview ROMs, basically. Anyway. What else could I try? There is this, but it doesn't want to boot right. Well, last I checked, it doesn't want to boot right. Let's see how it check checks now. Okay, first off, this is two ROMs, but only one of them shows in this menu. 
of the other aviators, it will show the other game. So that's one problem right off the bat. The other problem is this error 09 again. Oh, you know what? Let me try... Re disabling boot from BSX ROM, specifically for this. Hard reset. And it looks like now we're just getting a crash. Oh, no, I got a... Uh... Glitch title screen. Garbled graphics. And then a crash. So yeah, some ROMs have problems still, and for those I will need to show them on a different emulator sometime. That'll always crash. Why do I keep trying that? Oh, let's show Mario Paint. <laughs> now, this is the usual Nizal band Mario Paint. The main thing that's interesting about this one is what happens when you try hit and load here. As you can see here, when I hit load, this picture came up, and it's a picture that's actually stored in a ROM, interestingly enough. I asked around for some information on it, and eventually I heard that it was the winner of a contest that Satellu had for Mario Paint Art, so it was featured as basically a version of Mario Paint with the picture in the load thing, basically, more or less. Also, this version has keyboard support. I mean, joypad support, my bad. Yes, I'm using my joypad to pay this, play this Mario Paint with no hacks. That's just how it plays. Why didn't Nintendo release a joypad version of Mario Paint for the US? That's a... you know, that's like a region that could actually use it. Ah, uh, Nintendo was weird sometimes. Here's a ROM that won't boot, but... Uh, sorry. I should at least try booting at the BSX ROM. <laughs> Oops, I crashed the emulator again. Go fig. So great, this ended up being the crash SNES GT stream, basically. Hmm. Right, let's try that again. 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 
Ah, go figs. Slick Ninja left before that crash. Well, it would be before that crash on Slick Ninja's end. Anyway. What was that to Let's try BS Dragon Quest. Even though this is like a realm that was kind of screwed around with. Hmm, it doesn't boot on here. Even though I had it running on my SNES GT a bit back. I mean, my SD2 SNES a bit back. My bad. What the heck? I'm saying things wrong. Anyway. Next test. I'll show how Radical Dreamers boots, just to show Radical Dreamers booting. Is everything configured properly? It looks like it's configured properly. It's probably not configured properly, otherwise we'd probably see text there. Yeah, it's not configured properly. Give me a second. Okay. Oh, that's what it did wrong. Why is it trying to load the Dragon Quest ROM as the BIOS? What the heck? This, 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 this. Okay. Now it should play better. Okay, this should show you the difference between a game working under the BIOS and a game... Well, let me try... Let me try reloading around first. Okay, now this is going to move with the BIOS. And you will be able to see the difference. Even though for whatever reason I couldn't get it working like that before. SNES GT is kind of weird like that. Radical Dreamers. There you go. First off, you get text. You also get text in Japanese. You also get a working save menu, too. See, look, here's my save menu. I can set my name in English. And, as you can see, I wouldn't have been able to get this far without the, without the emulator correctly configured. One screw-up made the game unplayable, basically. This is why I do this kind of tutorial. Even though I basically screwed up the actual tutorial aspects of the tutorial, 
Alright, now let's try Super Famicom Wars, just because I'm bored. On a random note, this one apparently has a actual like copy protection mechanism for detecting if you try to boot it outside of the effects for whatever reason. Even though it's basically just like a little demo of sorts.
in case you don't realize, I completely lost what I was planning to do and I'm just playing the game now. Oh well. Oh, never mind. I accidentally did something stupid. Okay, now let's switch. Here's an example of a game that would basically be identical to the retail version, except that it's, uh, on the Satovia, basically. Uh, except for whatever reason, this one's not playing like that. Oops, from the sex drum, the sale, uh, reset. Yeah, this is just meant to be Act Razor. Now let me boot up Super Bomberman again, just to show you that it is, in fact, Super Bomberman. Where did I go? Here it is. This is a very weird ROM for how difficult it is to get it to boot on anything, in spite of it basically just being Super Famicom Super Bomberman on the Satellite View. Friggin' powered. Does that boot? It boots. Okay. This is one I don't really play that I get sidetracked way too easily, by the way. Spriggan powered VS version prelude. This is a ROM that's very strange in its behaviors.
Right, I will stop this as soon as I can find the pause button. Never mind, I'll just stop it. Here's BS Marvelous. I'll probably play more of that some other time. By the way, I showed that Mighty Pockets free crashes, but you can play these other Mighty Pockets rounds for whatever reason. They basically play just fine. Well, besides the complete lack of sound. I think I'm running out of ideas actually. I'll probably wrap this up in a minute. Let me just try to think if I forgot anything. Like seriously forgot anything that is. As opposed to like... Oh yeah. What I was doing before I had that last crash. That's what I forgot. Let me... Try to reload Ryoma de Yuku, which won't boot, but I'll get it as I explain it. Okay. Now. Here's a Ryoma de Yuku cat. <laughs> a Ryoma de Yuku data. Now, what happens when I try to boot it up? I will let it show before I explain it. That's not what it was supposed to show. Oh well. It does it just plain doesn't want to work with SNESGT anyway. But what it was gonna try to show was the message that shows up if you try to boot data made for RPG Sukuru 2 via BSX. If I had another ROM of RPG Sukuru 2 data on me, I'd show that. But Basically what it is, is that it'll give you a message saying the game is not designed to boot on BSX. And... For that, all I can really say is, like, for RPG Sukuru 2 data, there's really only, like, two emulators I can think of that can even boot that stuff up. So... It'll be quite the hurdle, so to speak, trying to get that all working. But Ryoma de Yuku is a RPG released on the Satoshi that was designed for booting up on RPG Sukuru 2, and you could use its assets as RPG Sukuru 2 assets. But yeah, I think that was the last thing I wanted to show. 
anyway, maybe sometime tomorrow or something, maybe not exactly tomorrow, but sometime later, I will pop up a different emulator, and I will show you how things work on that. So, in the meantime, let me see if there's any streams I'd feel like rating. No, not really. Uh, well, if anyone wants to give me some suggestions, I had the stream go on a bit longer than I intended, so I'll just shut off. I'll shut it off now, and and you know I will. <clears throat> I will check for any questions in the chat room, even though I don't see any right now. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask me, and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability, even though, as you can probably tell, that is not my strongest forte, but I try. Oh, wait, Azen entered. Hey, Azen. Uh, I was just about to wrap the stream up. Uh... Did you, uh, want me to restart from the beginning or something? Because it was meant to be a tutorial? Oh, you have a question. So you were paying attention this whole time? Okay, I'll work with that. Okay, what question do you have? Is that the question? Is O really the question? Please tell me that's not the question. I hope O really is not the question. I'll wait. Um, I think I'll keep playing this Kirby music some more. While I wait for the question. Oh no! Why are you going oh no? No! Ah! Not question got eaten. Shut up, Nightbot! Nightbot, stop, stop being such a Nightbot! Okay, while he's while he's on asking for that question, I will goof off a bit and I will show uh let me get this booted up. Thank you! Um as I mentioned before, it's from the Hoshi no Kabi You May No Izumi no Monokatari soundtrack. And it's one of the many soundtracks I found while searching for Satellavia music. Now, give me a second. Okay. Now, one thing I will show a bit before I...
Uh, Aizen, did you see most of the games I booted up? Have you ever tried booting them up in ZSAS? Have you ever actually tried booting those games up in ZSAS? Because, off the top of my head, I know that BS Tate Club won't boot in ZSNES, BS Shin Onigashima won't boot in ZSNES, Radical Dreamers won't play properly in ZSNES, uh, most of them magazines don't play in ZSNES, I don't think Super Famicom Wars BS Band works on ZSNES, I don't think BS Brigham Power works on ZSNES. Basically, none of these ROMs work on ZSNES. So why would I boot him on ZSNES? You probably played that patch. I know there is a patch of BS Fire Emblem that works on ZSNES. I think there are a few patches for BS Zelda that are like that as well. But most Satellview games don't get patches like that. Like... Um, I've never seen any patches to get BS Tante Club working on anything, or BS Shin Onigashima working on anything. Obviously, no one's dared try touching the Mighty Pockets. Well, that's why I'm here. I'm here to look into the BS stuff and tell you what I know. And I'm telling you that if you want to try playing Satellview stuff, ZSNES is absolutely terrible. I would all, I would go as far as to say that ZSNES is pretty terrible in general. But especially for Satellview stuff, ZSNES is terrible. Pretty much everything has to be hacked to work on ZSNES. And it's very unfortunate. Anyway, before I sign off, even though I was saying I was going to do that for Aeons now, let's take a look how BSX where it looks on no cash FNS. It can get very weird. You did not just say that. Please do not love Zsnes in front of me. Please do not love me and Zsnes at the same time. We do not get along in bed together. Woo! I just bought the sprint shoes. Look at me! I can run! As you can see, No Cash has a very dirty mind. But basically the point of this is to show what progress has been in regarding making a Satellaview server of sorts. Obviously, this is pretty hackish, but You know, it works.
Actually, let's check that char set dealer just because. Check this out. Woo! And now let's get into the graphics. Which probably are all gonna look like better. Hello, Unai. This stream should have been wrapped up a long time ago, but I'm busy fiddling around with stuff. One other thing No Cash SNS has is something on the receive program menu called Magic Floor. It's actually a homebrew application. And you can kind of download it. And... oh wait. No. <laughs> I want to try that. Okay. There's somewhere else you can download that too. Let's see, is this it? There it is, yes. I can download and play Magic Floor, the homebrew application. I should have read the instructions first. Uh, I don't want the plot, I want the instruction instructions. Uh, anyway. Okay. I end up there. <laughs> oh, there we go.
I remember I wrote a guide on the Tenga Na Kill game for rising stuff when that site was alive. Um, unfortunately, that site's long dead. Otherwise, does do you know? Maybe that research includes that guide I wrote, actually. Because I would like to have it back, I did not keep a personal backup. Stupid as I am. Oh, a Japanese site. Uh. Well. Maybe I'll disable the spam stuff on the bots. As in. Because I know people like talking in taps. I apologize about that. Stuff, I might as well show you whatever compatibility it has, by the way. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me there. Whoa, now this is kind of turning like a no-cash nest tutorial. As you can see, it's telling me to uh, make a BIOS folder and put the BSX ROM in there under a specific name, in fact. So I'm going to do that right now. Again, don't put me and Zeesness in the same bed together, Azen. No matter how much you love us, do not put us in the same bed together. It will not end well. Alright, I got no cash nest configured. Here's a ROM that did not boot Ness and ESGT, but it's booting in no cash nest. So that lets you know that SNES GT is not perfect. In fact, it has quite a few games that don't boot on it. Just like this. I will save the Sound Journal stream for later, though. It's not really a game per se, it's basically like karaoke. I would like to have the music prepared for that. Just so. We have that authentic feel, you know what I mean? Ah, no cash, no cash crashed. No cash crashed. It crashed trying to boot up BS Tank K Club. Yeah, no cash nest does not boot BS Tank K Club, it just crashes.
Wait, why is it asking me for the bios again? Okay, let me try that again. For whatever reason... Oh, uh, is it Python? Okay. Okay. Now... Gashima voting on here. Ah. As you can see, no cash SNS. Sinks the clock to real time. So it's 9.51 in my time zone, so it's 9.51 on here. Which basically makes this game unplayable at the time. Oh well. Let's try Via Santa Club again. Oh, now it's booting. That's better. Let's pick a few other games out of a hat. Let's stop the Kirby music because that's the last arranged track. It'll just be all Nintendo NES songs from there. As you can see, no cash SNS shares SRAM between everything, basically. Here's how BS for I know Sharen looks in no cashness. For whatever reason, BS for actually no Sharen is a ROM that is difficult to beat in a lot of emulators. Thankfully, no cache nest is not one of them. Of course, it's also a game I'm terrible at, so something's probably going to want me eventually. Oh, stairs. Not stairs. Ow. Oh, 
Why do you feel special, Azen? Oh, so fake. I need. Oh yeah. Well, that's a good point. I basically extended the stream because I had to answer your question, and then for some reason I extended it more. Okay. What did I do? Oh wait, the game clock. Oh! That's what happens when things are synced to a real-time clock. Since... Let me try booting that up again, even though it's at the minute where it should end. This should be amusing. It is refusing to play now. <laughs> okay, I think I should really finish the stream now. I've had enough artificial extensions. It's almost gone two hours. Whoa, whoa, that's pretty intimate, Azen. That's pretty intimate. I, I, I don't normally hug men, you know what I mean? I don't normally swing that way. I, I don't beat off with DK, even though I do play Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. Anyway, let me cut off the stream before it goes through to the two-hour mark. Um, Asian, are you streaming later? Or anything like that? I mean, I could hop on another stream fine. I just didn't expect this to go so long. Right. Okay, I'll just talk to you at the chat window then. And yeah. Good night everybody watching. For once there are people here when I'm quitting instead of me dragging it out until everyone eventually leaves on their own. Oh, now they're starting to leave. Okay. Bye bye everybody. <laughs> <laughs>